Hey ChatGPT, I'm a brand new web developer and I want you to give me just a really high level but very concise explanation of how a website works. Sure thing. A website functions through a combination of several components interacting with each other. At the highest level, here's how it works. One domain name. This is the web address. You are typing browser to the site like www.example.com. Two, web hosting. Website server on servers. This server stores the website's content and delivers it to users. Okay, can you tell me a little bit more about what role JavaScript plays in all of this? JavaScript allows users to interact with web pages in real time. This includes anything from clicking buttons that hide or show more content to entering data forms and even animations to client side logic. Okay, let's say I wanted to write some code. How would I actually go about doing that? To start writing code, especially as a new web developer, you'll follow a few straightforward steps. Here's a simple guide to get you going. So just like that, you can get started learning how to code without signing up for a four-year computer science degree, and you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on boot camps just to sit through hours of boring lectures and tutorials. Now, I don't have a course to sell you. I just want to show you a way that you can use ChatGPT to get started and the right kind of questions to ask to really accelerate your progress. By the end of this video, you'll have a simple app put together even if you know nothing about coding today. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is pick a programming language and a tech stack that you want to learn. And a tech stack is just a combination of technologies that work together to allow you to build a full application. The stack that I recommend is called MERN. It stands for Mongo, Express, React, and Node.js. And this stack is going to enable you to use JavaScript across the full stack and make it a lot easier to learn new information because you're not going to be switching between different languages. Also, the data is going to be a lot easier to understand because the way that you use it in the code is going to be the same way that it's represented in the database. It's going to be the same way that it's sent to the UI. And so it's going to be consistent throughout. So you're not going to have to make as many mental switches as you would if you were using a stack with multiple languages. Also, I've heard some people recommend starting with just plain JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And I actually recommend against that because I think it can actually get confusing and then describe encouraging once you run into a bunch of issues. A lot of the modern frameworks that we use nowadays, such as React, were actually designed to resolve a lot of the headaches that you would encounter if you were to just use plain JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So I would prefer to actually start with a framework and then work backwards if you need to dig into the details on how some of these technologies work on a lower level. But I find that the popular frameworks are often well written enough where I don't have to actually do that. I'm going to get into the specific prompts that you can use and how you can actually develop with AI. But first, I want to talk about the sort of projects and the sort of things that you should actually focus on building to help you build some real world experience and have some skills that are going to apply to many different projects that you could actually work on. The most important thing that you can do is to just get started. So go ahead and download VS Code right now. That's going to be your code editor. And then you can ask ChatGPT for instructions on how to use it, where you can put the code, what the code is actually going to do, and so on. Once you have VS Code installed and you're comfortable asking ChatGPT for advice, you're going to want to think of some practical problems that you want to solve. Maybe you can start with something super basic to get familiar with how the technologies work, like a Hello World sort of app, which I'll show you later in the video. But after that, you're going to want to find a problem that you want to solve and start coding to figure out how to actually solve it. One of the reasons that you want to pick a practical problem to solve and ideally something that you're interested in is because it's going to give you a very natural reason to actually learn things and then retain the information that you learn because your mind will see the purpose behind learning something rather than just getting a bunch of information stuffed into it and then just letting it fly out the other ear. You will start to see why certain technologies are necessary and how they fit into the bigger puzzle. So for me as a YouTuber, one problem that I've encountered is that I don't know what my thumbnails are going to look like on a video before I upload it. And so I've been working on this app that's going to help me actually preview what the thumbnails are going to look like amongst a bunch of other YouTube videos. One of the things that I wanted to do is make sure that I get the sizing of everything just right so it looks just like the YouTube website. So I really had to dig into the details of CSS and understand how certain properties have a different effect on these various elements elements on the web page. By trying to precisely imitate that layout, I was able to learn some new CSS properties that I didn't know about before. And this was a very natural way for me to explore that because I was learning something new that I had to learn in order to achieve what I wanted to do. 
So try to think of something that you might actually want to use and try to build it. Even if the final product is super complicated and doesn't seem realistic for you to build now, you're gonna be able to start building a lot of skills as you slowly approach that final product. Okay, so let's say you know what you wanna create, but you still don't know how to code. Let's head over to ChatGPT and I'll share a bunch of different prompts with you and have ChatGPT write a lot of the code for you, explain it to you, and help you actually learn how it works. Okay, so we're going to go to ChatGPT and put in this simple prompt to get started from scratch. I'm brand new to coding and I want to use the MERN stack to build a basic Hello World web app. What do I do? Okay, and it gave us a pretty thorough explanation here. Look, it explains what MERN is. So we can use these terms to ask follow-up questions to explain these different components. These technologies work together to enable full stack development. It explains what they're used for. Okay, set up your development environment. Install Node.js and NPM. Look at that, it gives us a link. So we can go here, can download Node.js. So let's say we've done that. We can go download MongoDB, install a code editor, Visual Studio Code. Okay, let's do that. Initialize your project. Create a new directory for your project and navigate into it in your terminal or command prompt. Okay, so let's just ask what that means. What is a terminal? What is it used for? Okay, terminal also known as a CLI or shell is a text-based interface. So this is a really thorough explanation. It might make me feel overwhelmed. So I'm just gonna ask, can you explain that in a few simple sentences with an example. Okay, that's much better. A terminal is like a special window on your computer where you type commands to tell the computer what to do instead of clicking with your mouse. Makes perfect sense. And so you can see how you can ask these follow-up questions and it will actually explain things for you, making it really easy to learn. I put together a list of really useful prompts and terminology that you should become familiar with and I left a link in the description, so make sure to check it out. Totally free, no email list, nothing like that. So when you say I should run npm init, where do I do that? How do I use the terminal? I got VS Code, by the way. Okay, using the terminal in VS Code is straightforward, integrates smoothly in your coding environment. Explains how to do it for us, right? So essentially, we're gonna follow these steps and we're gonna set up our project. So let's say we got npm init now. I don't know what this package JSON does, right? So like I could ask it follow-up questions about that. Let's go ahead and do that run npm init. Okay, we got a package.json here. Now it says, go ahead and create a file named server.js with this code, and we can just copy that right over. Okay, I got that code. So one thing I like to do with ChatGPT is to have it explain code for me. So if it's written something or if I just found some code I'm unfamiliar with, I can just ask it directly to explain the code and then dig into the details. So check this out. So this gives me a good start, but let's say I'm brand new and I don't know what the syntax means, I can just ask the follow-up question. Here I'm asking how the syntax of the code actually works. So you can see that you can really get into the details and really learn a lot by following this process. Now let's go back to building our little app. I skipped a step, it said npm install express. Okay, let's do that. What does it mean to npm install express? Okay, so it explains what that did for us. See, this way you can get answers much more quickly than if you were searching online. Like if you were Googling this question, you might find 10 different links and then have to dig through to find the actual answer. But when you ask ChatGPT, you can get the answer much more quickly. I want to make an important note that you really need to use one of the top end models to write code because something that's free like GPT-3 or Llama is just not going to do a very good job. And it's just gonna leave you frustrated. So seriously, do yourself a favor and just pay the 20 bucks for ChatGPT Plus or Claude and it's gonna pay off in a huge way. Now we're gonna run your server using node server.js. Okay, let's copy that over. Server is running on port 3000. Okay, I wonder what that means. Visit this URL and to see the hello world message. Look at that. We got our first web app put together in a matter of minutes using ChatGPT. Even if you don't know how to code, I didn't have to write any code to make this happen. 
Even if I don't totally understand what each of these commands is doing, it's helping me move forward and then when I see things break or when things don't make sense, I can ask follow-up questions so that ChatGPT can explain it for me. This becomes a much faster way to learn than Googling things because the answer can just be customized to what you're looking for and ChatGPT understands the context in which you're asking that sort of question. So I can start putting together a list of questions that I can explore with ChatGPT. And oftentimes it makes sense to have a chat where you're doing this sort of exploration and a separate chat where you're doing a lot more of the coding and having it build upon the code that it originally wrote and is helping you edit. So I can save off these questions and just have ChatGPT answer them in a separate thread. I'll show you how I use ChatGPT to troubleshoot issues and write additional code in a moment, but I wanted to share this high level blueprint with you, which touches upon the various ways in which you can interact with ChatGPT to help you learn how to code. So first I would start with asking it to actually go ahead and build something and you can just have ChatGPT write that code. If you don't know how that code works, you can then have it explain things about the code and you can ask follow-up questions if it references certain concepts that may be new. Try to run that code and see if you get any errors and if you do, paste those back into ChatGPT and have it help you troubleshoot what the problem may be. After you do some investigation, ChatGPT is going to give you some changes that you can make to get more functional code. And if you get stuck, I suggest to use that opportunity to dig into what the code is actually doing and understand line by line what is happening. And you can just ask ChatGPT to explain that and that can help you identify the problem and learn along the way. Finally, as you want to make changes to your code, just take your code, paste it into ChatGPT, ask for the changes and paste them back in and see what happens. And if you see some errors, Keep repeating that process until you get to the point that you're happy with it. Sometimes it can feel like you get stuck in an infinite loop, but again, just use that opportunity to literally understand what is happening in the code and have ChatGPT explain it to you. Now let's have ChatGPT finish our UI code, improve it based on our feedback, and troubleshoot issues as a problem comes up. Okay, so now it's saying npx create react app client. All right, let's run that. Okay, so that command finished running. Now we can cd client and then npm start. Okay, let's try that. cd client npm start. Hey, check it out. We got our React app working on our local host. Local host is just your own computer, basically. Let's ask, I heard something about APIs. What are they and how can I add one to this app? So you can see it's building on the context of what it previously showed us. So in this example, it's saying open the server.js file and you can add a route. Okay, we're gonna have this hello world from the API added to our server. Can you make the React client use this API and display that in the UI somehow? Okay, let's see what it tells us to do. It says to use fetch to call your API and it gives us a bunch of code so that we can directly replace app.js. Let's try it out. Okay, so I went to this and it says API message but it doesn't have a message. Let's do some troubleshooting with ChatGPT and figure out what went wrong. So in this case, I'm gonna tell it what I saw and what the message was. Now, if I read carefully, it does actually tell me what is going on here because it tells me to run the server on a different port, but we can pretend that I missed that and see what it says. Okay, so it gives us some troubleshooting steps. Let's try going here and see what we see there. Okay, uh, so it just says can't be reached. Let's tell it that. Okay, so now we've taken a second step. We've told it the new error that we see and it's giving us some instructions to get things back on track. Okay, so it's saying like, make sure your server is running. Let's go ahead and make sure it is. Okay, it also tells us to check for this cores policy. So, and it tells us how we can figure that out. So F12, check out in the console tab. Let's see if we see anything like that going on. Okay, oh, hey, look at that. There's the cores error. Let's see what ChatGPT tells us to do. Okay, we gotta add this stuff to our server. Let's see if that fixes our message. There we go, look at that. Hello world from the API. So now we actually have the server and the UI connected. 
So just imagine learning about cores in a classroom. I mean, how quickly would you forget what this is for and why it matters? But encountering the concept when you're trying to build an app makes you actually try to understand what is going on and why it matters. And then your brain is going to retain that information much better. So let's ask ChatGPT to iterate on the code for us. Okay, I finally got it working. Can you make the font bigger and include a number that goes up every time I press a button? So one thing I remember having to fix in the earlier code is that when I do this fetch, it actually had to have local hosts. So one trick that I like to use is to tell ChatGPT my current code before it writes new code so that it makes sure to do it the right way. So I told it I had to make some changes. Here's the latest code. Can you rewrite what you just said? All right, and now we can see that it actually adds that fix to the response that it generates. Okay, here we go, we got a counter button. And now every time I click, it adds to the counter. Very cool. Oh, one more thing I wanna mention is that there is this new code editor that I've been trying out. I've just tried it for a few days, but I am enjoying it so far. It is called Cursor and it has AI built directly into it. So you can actually have much more intelligent autocomplete and you can ask it about different files. I'm still exploring it, so I don't quite know all the details of how it works, but if you wanna stay on top of things, make sure to check it out because it is pretty cool. Okay, so hopefully that's enough for you to get started, but if you're wondering, does it even make sense to code anymore now that AI can do it? Check out this video where I share my thoughts and check out this video if you're feeling more confident about coding and you're ready to get started on a more technically challenging project. I'll see you there. Take care.